Hey everybody! Welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This How To video is going to focus on using SPSS to run an independent samples t-test and to understand how to conclude that t-test to find the critical values using a t-table to also find the p-value that SPSS gives you and to determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. So let's get started. In this particular data set, I'm going to use gender as my independent variable or my grouping variable. I'm going to group by males and females, so that's going to separate my data set into two independent samples. And what I'm going to be looking at for my dependent variable is height. I'm curious if males and females have a significant height difference. And so what I'm looking at here for my dependent variable is the height. I'm going to be running an independent samples t-test to see whether my males and female heights are significantly different or not. So to do this, I'm going to choose Analyze, and then I'm going to be comparing means. And in this case, I have two samples that are independent. Some of them are male, some of them are female, and I want to run a t-test. All right, now my grouping variable here is gender. And so when I move that over, I want to tell SPSS, what are the names of my gender? How are they named in my data set? And I can see that they're actually named with words like male or female. This is not always the case, but it is here in this particular data set. I'm going to define my groups. My first group is going to be male, and it's called M-A-L-E with a capital M. My second group is female, just as it appears in my data set. Now I'll click Continue. And this tells SPSS how to separate my sample into these two groups. Notice that my grouping actually has to be identical to the way it looks in the data set. Now my test variable, or my dependent variable, is what I'm analyzing. And in this case, I'm just analyzing height, because I want to see if males and females heights are significantly different. So I'm going to move that over. That's all SPSS needs to know to run that independent samples t-test for me. So I'm going to click OK. Now SPSS is going to pull up the results for me. Let me go ahead and open these up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to scroll down. Now I can visually see the means up here when I look at the group statistics results. My males are about almost 67 inches, about 66.99. My females are 60.86. I can see that there's a difference in my sample means, but I don't know yet whether there's a significant difference according to my t-test. Now whenever you run an independent samples t-test, you always have to first determine whether or not you're going to have equal variances assumed or you're not going to assume equal variances. Now happily, SPSS runs an f-test for us and gives us the p-value of that f-test. This p-value is much larger than my alpha value of 0.05. So my variances can be assumed to be equal. They are not significantly different. So I'm going to use the top row when I look at my t-test results. Next, my t-test value is 1.534. My degrees of freedom are 241. And my p-value here is 0.126. So these are my results. Now, if I were to just directly use SPSS's results, I would take the p-value and compare it to my alpha value of 0.05. Now, here my p-value of 0.126 is much larger than 0.05. Therefore, my results do not allow me to reject the null hypothesis. My heights are not significantly different here so I cannot reject the null. Now let's see if I wanted to actually take my t value and my degrees of freedom and look up this value to see whether that's also going to be concurred using a t table. So here my t value is 1.534. My degrees of freedom are 241 because I'm using equal variances and I've already decided that and my alpha value is 0.05. I'm also running a two-tailed test. That's very important as well. 
Now I've already pulled up a table on the internet here, so I'm going to go ahead and just scooch this out of the way so you can see the table. This is my table here, and I need to scroll down to try to find my degrees of freedom, and I want to use a two-tailed test, and I want alpha to be 0.05. Each t-table that you find, and there's usually one in the back of your textbook if you have a statistics book, looks a little different, but they're fairly easy to read, but you have to look and see that you're looking at the right columns. I want a two-tailed test. I want my alpha to be 0.05, and my degrees of freedom are 241. You'll notice that anything over 120 just has the same value. So when I come down here to this middle column, for my two-tailed test, I'm going to be using critical values of plus 1.960 and minus 1.960. Now the question is, does my T value fall inside those rejection regions? Is it bigger than 1.96 or is it less than minus 1.96? And let me see if I can actually get my computer show you both of these things at the same time. There we go. So here's my critical values, plus and minus, and here's my t-value. But my t-value is not in the rejection region. It's not larger than 1.96, nor is it smaller than negative 1.96. Therefore, this also helps me conclude that I am not going to reject my null hypothesis. And that's exactly the same thing that the SPSS p-value told me. So in the end, I'm not going to reject the null, and I'm going to conclude that my males and females are not significantly different. So that's how to use SPSS and also a t-table to determine the result of an independent samples t-test. Thanks for joining me.